welcome welcome housewives of true crime yeah what's up oh i forgot my lip gloss today damn it damn it oh uh, what's up guess what i'm what? I have a little bit of some southern hospitality to tell you that happened oh. today oh boy <laughs> it's never happened to me before okay okay so I was taking my son. He loves the McDonald's. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I know it's like really bad. Sorry. My computer's like being noisy. Um, and sometimes for a treat, I let him get it in the morning. You I take him all the fucking time. Just okay. admit it. You take him all okay. the time. So and I, here, here's a secret about for all you moms out there. You know, I never ate McDonald's. I never even ate it as a teenager. When you have kids, you got to go to McDonald's. You, you, the McDonald's is, is what I thought. And this particular child doesn't eat anything. Yeah. So whatever he wants to eat, I'm kind of like his bitch, yeah. right? Yeah. So McDonald's owns the happy meal game. He doesn't That's even like, he doesn't even like happy meals. I know, the kid but is I'm so just freaking, saying when you're on a road yes. trip, if you tell your kid, I'll get you a happy meal. They're like, yeah, happy. okay. I'll shut yeah. up. Yeah. Like, well, it's called happy meal for a reason. That's right. Um, so anyways, I go and I get up to the first window and the woman says the guy behind you just paid for your meal oh, or in front lovely. of me, the guy in front of me. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's nice. So did you pay it forward and pay for the next person's meal? Do you know, I am the big old B that didn't even think about that. <laughs> so Tabitha. I know. What a stupid. So I'm going to today in Starbucks line. Yeah, I'm, you definitely have to pay it forward or that is like real bad karma. Totally. And so listen, I, I just was kind of dumbstruck. I'm like, holy heck, what? Somebody paid for me? That's like never happened to me before. So I go and tell my tennis girls about it and they are like, oh yeah. I mean, I love when that happens. Like it freaking happens all the time here. Yeah. And then they also said, they were like, yeah, did, she's right? like, what? Like, they didn't ask me if I did, <laughs> but one of them was like, yeah. And then I look behind me and I have to, I have a van full of kids that I have to pay for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I imagine that happens. Yes. And so I've learned my lesson now and I'm going to do it today at Starbucks. The guy got okay. lucky by the way, cause I only ordered two English muffins. It was $2. <laughs> but, okay. Still. I know, but I am so like, it made my day. That's what's important. Yes. So I'll make somebody else's day. Somehow. Okay. Good, 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 yeah. good, good. Well, I, I have spent all morning on the phone with the insurance company. My insurance company does not have record of my child that has been insured through them. They like dropped her. <laughs> they have nice. my other two kids, but one kid is missing. I had a, I kind of knew something was up a couple months ago. I went to go get her a prescription and the pharmacist was like, no, she's not we don't have her blah. It was a whole thing. I ended up just, you know, I had like three sick kids in the car. So I ended up just paying cash for the prescription. Yeah. But just recently I got informed. I have to take my kids to the eye doctor. Oh, that's right. Cause they got my husband's stupid, bad eye genes. Apparently I called them to make an appointment and was like, yeah, my kids got the letter from school and they were like, we've never heard of that. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, you're a pediatric ophthalmologist. What do you mean? She they like, do that at know. school. They do the hearing test and the eye test. You know, they I know, but I think not that many kids get told they have bad eyes. Oh, well, you don't see that many kids with glasses, but you do see. Well, you're going to see two. I think you're going to see two more on the scene. So anyways, um, she told, she called in and said, no, your insurance says you don't have a a Ruby Third child. Macaulay. Yeah. <laughs> but they're twins. Like I do. <laughs> Trust <Yeah>. me. <laughs> when she called me to verify their birthdays, I thought she was just calling because I get that double take on their birthdays a lot. Cause my kids are, I had three kids within one year. Right. And I was like, yeah, I know it wasn't on purpose. And she's <laughs> like, no, that's not. 
thanks for the overshare but that's not what i'm calling about i'm like oh okay let me have that fun conversation with the insurance company oh god i hate that you're probably on the phone all day oh let me tell you we got nowhere oh that's also yeah. really fun mm -hmm. awesome yeah, I actually had an insurance call today also about my kids' dental insurance because they said I don't have any, but I do. But yeah, I don't know why. It's not as easy as like your health insurance. I feel like you always carry that card around, or I do at least. Yeah. I, I have no idea about dental insurance. <laughs> Every six no. months you have to use it. So yeah. Anyways, anywho. Anyways, you want to talk some crime? I do. I do. Let's do it. All righty, Gretchen. This week, I this am week. taking you to the South because I, I just it. love the Southern hospitality. I love it. Um, this case comes out of Arkansas, and it is also a listener suggestion and a Patreon member, Carla, that gave us the suggestion. What up, Carla? I love that name. Thank you, Carla. You have always loved that name. Yeah. And it is a very pretty name and she spells it with a K. So I I just love when names are spelled with Ks because I think that they are more feminine. Except for there's girls. that whole Carla Homolka thing. You know, she was a murderer. Oh, yes. That's Oof. a bad Carla with a K. But other than that, I think it says feisty and fun. I like that. Oh. I hope that that's Carla what that's the read I get both. on the name Carla with <laughs> okay. a K. Okay. All right. So let's just think that Carla, since she's also a Patreon member, she for sure is feisty and fun. Obviously she's our people. Okay. Okay. So this uh, particular crime comes out of Scott, Arkansas, which is a really rural town outside of Little Rock. Okay. Um, in 2010, the population was only 72. Whoa. So I'm sure it's grown a little bit by now, but probably not that much. Doubled in size, a whopping <laughs> <Yeah>. 140. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in 2014, when this crime came out, uh, I'm sure it didn't grow that much. So right. also, fun fact is my stepdad lives in Little Rock, Arkansas. So shout out to Tim. Shout out, Tim. And it's also funny that we talk about real estate because this case actually involves a real estate agent. Beverly Carter was her name. She was a top performer in the area selling homes. Uh, I'm sure that she broadened past that little town of Scott because uh, she had an office in North Little Rock. Okay. Okay. Beverly was the it girl in her office. She was beautiful with this smile that any orthodontist would kill for. Her billboards and posters were everywhere. And oh, she's you, like that. Yeah, she's like that. Okay. If you needed a house sold or bought, then you better be calling Beverly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Houses are pretty reasonably priced. Can you imagine? You can get a big chunk of land like a brand new build on a, on 1.5 acres for now in 2021, $250,000. Sounds dreamy, actually. Yeah. 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 Hot damn, right? Mm -hmm. It's not even far from Little Rock. So I, I don't know, kind of sounds awesome to be a little bit remote, but have a big piece of land. You couldn't do it. I know, mm -mm. but you could. <laughs> I could. Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about Bev. She was a total disco biscuit. In September of 2014, she was 50 years old and rocking it. She had recently lost 60 pounds and got herself a little mommy makeover. Ooh. Her and her husband had raised three boys, had some rough patches along the way, but made it through and she deserved it. And let me tell you, she did deserve to feel beautiful and happy. And I don't think that you need to have plastic surgery to accomplish this, but I don't judge. Like I said on Patreon, like 
yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Some reviewer, whatever, a, whatever is your whatever makes that's you what feel I good. Said. Yeah, whatever. sure. Whatever Listen, is working for you. This person had a distaste for us talking about plastic surgery, but Gretchen and I are just happy that people are happy, whichever way they get to happiness. Whatever. Okay? Yeah. So okay. Beverly was smoking at this okay. point. Okay. And she worked hard for it, dude. She lost sixty pounds. That is not easy. Totally. Beverly got married real young. She met her husband at 16 years old in Texas of all places. And they had a little tiny courthouse wedding. And then she popped out those three kids. So while you and I know raising three kids is pretty hard, it was hard for the Carters too. So hard that when the kids were young, they struggled a little bit with infidelity and one instance of violence. Beverly also lost one of her sons at the age of 19, oh. which was 11 years before 2014. Okay. So just 11 years earlier, she lost a son. I could not find the details about how he passed away, but he did leave behind a wife, a daughter and a stepson. So I can only imagine that probably had a strain on her marriage too. Sure. But Beverly's husband, Carl, and her fought through it. And by 2014, they were happily married for almost 35 years. And they were so happy. They had just renewed their vows and had a big old party. Kiss of death. (laughs) You always say that. Vow renewal, total kiss of death. (laughs) Not always. Okay. Mm. Name someone it's worked out for. I don't know. Exactly. I I was supposed to go to a vow renewal party, uh, but the pandemic hit, so they never did it. So maybe that was lucky for them. I don't know. Okay. She also wasn't always a real estate agent. That's something that she fell into after her kids were out. And something that her friends knew that she would be good at. And she was on September 25th, Beverly was working like she always did. And she had a late showing out in this rural part of town in Scott. She knew the area well, and she loved the area. Actually, these buyers called her. They claimed that it would be a fast cash deal. They want it closed quickly and they were paying cash. And that is real exciting. If you are a real estate agent, trust me, my mother-in-law right now is dealing with these people that want loans and all this shit done. And it is like, if you have a good quick buyer, I think you like go to extra showings late if you need to. Yeah. So Beverly calls Carl, her husband, around 530 to tell him that she's going to show this house to a couple. She gives Carl the address, which is pretty smart, I've got to say. And she says she'll be home after. Well, by 830 at night, when Beverly hasn't shown up at home, Carl starts to worry. He starts calling and texting his wife, and he's not getting any response. So he calls his son, Carl Jr., and tells him that he doesn't know where his mom is, and he's starting to freak out. Carl Jr., Carl Jr., (laughs) not McDonald's. It's kind of funny. I didn't even think about that when I was doing this, writing this down. Uh Um, Carl Jr. wasn't actually worried. He knows his mom. He knows the business, and he knows that if you want to close a deal or make an offer sometimes you work late and try to get it done but Carl senior just had a bad feeling so he finally tells his son I'm going to go drive by the house where she was showing and has Carl jr drive by the office to see if his mom is there well mom isn't there she's not at the office and Carl senior as he's pulling up to the house and Scott immediately sees Beverly's car it's unlocked with her purse inside and everything but her cell phone and keys missing. He goes to the door and it's wide open. So he makes his way into this vacant house and it's dark. 
by this time it's like nine o'clock at night and I guess they didn't keep the electricity on in this house so he's searching around with his like phone light you know yeah and he knows that Beverly just would not leave with someone without taking her purse so he's checking everywhere he even goes in the attic of the house and nothing so he starts flipping out he calls the police he calls his son his son rushes over to the house to meet with the police and as the police show up you know they take the report they question both carl's and carl jr says that his dad was so freaked out that he was just sitting in his truck like sucking down cigarettes you know like a crazy person mm-hmm. he says that he looked real suspicious because he you know was just i don't know being like kind of like a weirdo but i okay. think in that situation you kind of just don't know what you were gonna do right yeah The police were questioning Carl Sr., basically saying, so you're telling us that you went all over the crime scene with your DNA and your fingerprints, even in the attic? And yeah, he did. So you can only imagine that they're thinking that he's probably the number one suspect in this case, since usually it is the husband. Don't we always say that? It's always the husband. Yes. However, however, there was a note in Beverly's notepad that was in her car with a name and a phone number on it for the clients that she was meeting. They were a married couple relocating. And unfortunately, the name and the email were fake. The phone number written down on the paper was to an anonymous calling website. It's like this shady website where you can call people from it and it gives like a fake number. You know, those kind of websites you use those. Um, I've, uh, yeah, I use them all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have heard of them in uh, the crime related context. I know. I'm like, this is totally for criminal activity. Mm-hmm. Who makes this stuff? This is a bad website. Thankfully, the people that make Ashley Madison, all I those know, people, I they know. belong to the same club. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. like that club. Mm-hmm. I'm anti that club. Um, so thankfully, this website does keep the actual phone number that they're coming from. So police were able to get the owner of the phone number's real name. Police also, well, by the way, they didn't get it right away. You know, they have to like look into that. Yeah, it takes a while. Sure. But they do right away start canvassing the neighborhood, trying to see if anybody saw Beverly or anyone else that could have been in the house. One neighbor actually did see a young male, white, dark, super short hair. He had his car pulled up backwards, rear facing you know, like the rear end facing the front door, which would explain also these weird tire marks on the grass that they found. Um, At this point, also the Carter family has told the whole real estate world, you know, that their mom is missing. And the whole town of North Little Rock, Arkansas was on high alert. Agents were driving around everywhere looking for Beverly they were passing out flyers. I mean, they really went all hands in to try to find to try to find her. In the middle of the night, Carl actually received a few text messages from Beverly's phone, but immediately they knew it wasn't her. One of them said, "Sorry, my phone is de- was dead," and another one said, "Still out having drinks," but Beverly didn't drink, so. That was real uncharacteristic of her. And her husband was like, he knew that wasn't really coming for her, coming from her. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. Agents started canvassing the area. um, And everybody was just like, how could she just disappear? And who the heck was this couple that she showed the house to? Her husband gave a statement on the news. 
begging for his wife back, just ask the person to drive by, drop her off on the sidewalk and just keep driving. Police at the time, they were working behind the scenes. Just a couple days after Beverly went missing, they started staking out the name of the person that called from that fake number. His name was Aaron Lewis of Jackson, Arkansas. The investigators decided to go to his house to see if he matched the description of the, that the neighbor had given them. And sure enough, when he walked out of his house, perfect match, dark shaved head, white guy, young looking. Aaron jumped into his car and noticed the detectives right away and started to freak out. So he peeled out and took off fast. The detectives trailed him turning a corner. And when they, they turned the corner, Aaron I crashed his car and he was pretty injured, mm -hmm. but they couldn't arrest him because they don't have a re an arrest warrant. Oh. So they escort him to the hospital. And I'm sure at this time they're trying to get an arrest warrant while he's, you know, being treated at the hospital. Yeah. And so Aaron goes to get a CT scan and decided it was safer for him to run than to actually get help for his injuries. Oh, so he jets out of the hospital, leaving the investigators in the dust. But he also put himself as the number one suspect in this kidnapping of Beverly. So local news reporters immediately put out Aaron's picture, his name, and say that they are looking for Aaron Lewis as the number one suspect in the missing persons case of Beverly Carter. Thankfully, a resident had his eyes peeled when he looked out his office window and saw a man matching this description. This resident guy goes, sees Aaron at a bus stop, and he's like, I'm going to go and, you know, scope him out. So he goes up there, asks Aaron about the bus times sees that Aaron was nervous and weirded out. He starts walking away, Aaron does. And this guy follows him, calls 911, stays close to where Aaron is until the cops came. I mean, this guy's like... That's excellent work. I think so also. So Aaron was, hide, was found hiding in an office closet in some apartment building. And they arrested him and questioned him. And... He was pretty forthcoming. He says, yep, he kidnapped Beverly with another guy for money. At one point, he even told a reporter when she was like, when he was walking by, like, why did you do it? He says, because she was working alone and was a rich broker. A police officer also testified that Aaron had discussed the kidnapping in his car, in his cop car. You know, when you told me the thing about she's there alone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That does give me like a little, that makes me cringe. Like, I don't know, likey a woman in a, in a vacant house showing it to random people really any time of the day, but especially at, at night, like dusk or whatever. It's like, five, yeah, no, it still was early 530 September. We're in September now. Like it still isn't totally dark. So I'm sure she thought it was okay, but you know, she didn't do a couple things like she, which I noticed that they do now. It's like, they always ask you for some sort of like bank statement or, you know, like they want to no, show tab, they don't. That's when you're looking at fancy houses. I think they do. I've you don't think so? a lot of houses. Yeah, I'm sure. I roll into, there's an open house on my street right now. I just rolled through. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that, I don't know. I, I think that maybe you should get at least uh, somebody's ID, like a copy of their driver's license. Right. There's got to be some sort of vetting. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So, um, Cops look into this accomplished, comp, accomplish, look into his accomplice, and they found the guy that he was talking about, one of his friends. And the guy, and I don't even want to say his name because he didn't do it. He was out of town 
And I don't know, Aaron was just trying to drag him down with him. Weird. What they did find, though, was that Aaron had a lot of communication with his wife, and she seemed to have a lot of knowledge as to what happened to Beverly. His wife's name is Crystal Lowry. So basically, these two pieces of shit, Aaron Lewis and Crystal Lowry, decided they wanted to kidnap someone to get ransom or some money out of their bank account. They decided a realtor was a good pick because they work alone, drive fancy cars, and seem to make a lot of money. The funny thing is, is that, of course, it can be true, but it's not necessarily true. You know, actually, from the real estate agents that I know, first of all, you have to drive a nice car because you're driving around people. So it's like a business expense. So totally. it's probably it's probably leased and it's just a business expense. Second of all, yeah, they're rich for like a month and then they don't sell a house for three months and then they're back to, you know, being po. This it's, is a, true. it's an up and down unless you're like selling on sunset, you know, I mean, your commission has got to last a while and they got, they, they hustle. I know. Who wants to be out there schlepping houses on the weekends? I mean, not, I think not I listen, these two, they thought they were going to get a hundred thousand dollars from this woman. First of all, if you have a hundred thousand dollars, just lying around your bank account, good for you, because that's a lot of freaking money just to be able to like take out on a whim. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you're right. From some reports that I read, and I wasn't going to put it in here, but um, they said that she only had a hundred bucks in her bank account at the time. So, yeah, I mean, yes, there's ebbs and flows for sure. Yeah. And this was not an, not a flowing time of money for her. So they picked the wrong person and Beverly happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And these two creeps just they liked that house because it was in a more rural area and Beverly was intrigued by their cash offer. So um, I know she felt like she felt pretty comfortable. She actually talked to Crystal on the phone once because she wanted to know that like it was a couple and she wasn't just meeting, you know, a man at the house mm. by herself. But the problem was she was just meeting a man at the house by herself because Crystal didn't come. You know what else these real estate agents have to deal with? Have you watched that show, Selling Sunset? No. Okay. Well, some of these dudes, they just want to like go out with the hot agent. So they're like, they're like, show me houses. And then they tell them like, and then I want to take you to dinner. And they're like, "Um, hi, I'm like, I'm hot, but I'm also married. And I don't. Yeah. But they really want that like $200,000 commission. But they're like, yeah, you're gross. Listen, I mean, I understand. Not that feeling to be a real estate agent. Listen, I used to be in sales. And remember that one time I told you, I might have even told you on the podcast that I went to some, this was real, not smart of me, but some strip club owner needed payroll. I sold payroll at the time. And so he wanted me to come to his strip club to sell him payroll. And I did. And then he started feeding me drinks and I was like, oh, you know, like what a nice guy until, I mean, nothing happened and I got the deal closed, but I thought at the the time after it was kind of not smart, you know, No. nobody knew where I was. I was in like a real bad part of town at some sleazy place, like not smart. Yeah. But I wanted to close the deal because my, yeah. you know, I needed an, I needed another number under my belt because I needed, you know, I didn't want to get fired. Yeah. yeah. So safety first ladies. I know. Gosh. Okay. So she gets there and Crystal's not there. It's just Aaron. And he tells her right away that she's about to have a real bad day. And he has like a taser gun with him and he says, you better cooperate with me. And she does. 
He duct tapes her hands together and her mouth shut and puts Beverly in the trunk of his car. He was going to take her to a pl like an old place of employment to keep her there while he took her bank card to get all of her money. But the plan didn't work because for some reason he could not leave her at this old place of employment. I'm thinking maybe somebody was still there when he drove up or whatever. So he takes a picture of Beverly in his trunk with his cell phone and sends it to Crystal and says he needs help. He brings Beverly to their house and Crystal was insistent that she did not want her there. And this was a huge problem. Well, there was two problems. One problem was Crystal didn't want Beverly in the house. And second problem was that Beverly didn't have her ATM card on her because Beverly's purse was left in her car, which is actually a safety thing that real estate agents do. Like you don't take like all of your stuff with you into the house, okay. which I thought to myself, and I've seen a lot of houses because I was looking all through Dallas. I'd never saw a real estate agent with their purse. Yeah. Yeah. So Aaron, not the sharpest tool in the shed, uh, obviously because he left the purse in the car, didn't notice when he was like putting her in the trunk that she didn't have anything with her. So he says, Hey, Crystal, you've got to watch her. I'm putting her in the bathroom. I'm giving you the stun gun and I'm going to go back to the house and Scott and grab her purse out of her car. But once Aaron arrived back at the house, um, it was already swarming with police. He panicked, like how the heck did they already know? I guess not thinking that Beverly would have a husband that would be concerned. Right. So his plot was foiled. So he heads back to his house where Crystal has then realized that Beverly most likely has seen her real name on her prescription drugs that are in the bathroom. So she tells Aaron that he has to get rid of Beverly. At some point, Aaron has Beverly record a statement to her husband saying, and I'm just going to like paraphrase it like her. She says something like, hey, honey, I'm okay. But if you call the cops, I might not be. So just listen to them. Carl never heard that recording. Um, I think that Aaron just didn't know what to do. And Crystal was real freaked out and adamant that they had to kill her. So Crystal's a real bitch. Uh, yeah, Crystal is a real bitch. You're right. Aaron takes Beverly, leaving Crystal behind at the house, but texting back and forth with her and asks her, like, do you really want me to do this? Do you really want me to take care of the situation? And Crystal every time says yes. So Aaron wraps Beverly's head in duct tape six times, suffocating her to death. He takes her to that old place of work um, at some cement place and her, him and Crystal, they, he eventually picks her up and they dig a shallow grave and bury Beverly. After they bury her, they go to have waffles at the Waffle House. Aaron brags to Crystal that he has no conscience and he doesn't feel anything for doing that. And Crystal states on the stand that she had just felt numb at the time. I do love the Waffle House. Sorry. Okay, so I see it all the time. I think I need to go there. Oh my God, I've you not, totally, I've you not so been do. yet. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I have a bad taste in my mouth that they went there though. I know, um, but try to get over it because Waffle House is good. It's good. Okay. Yeah. So police were quickly able to find Beverly in that cement plant and they arrested Crystal pretty quickly. Also, they charged both of them for kidnapping and murder. Uh, you know, these two, the whole text messaging back and forth thing. I mean, I don't even know why he called with a cryptid 
phone number because the guy's like total idiot. Um, they had so much evidence, you know? Yeah. So Crystal, um, being probably the smarter one of the two pled guilty in exchange for a reduced sentence. And Wait, she would have- I got lost. Okay, I got lost. Sorry. Okay. How did they discover it was them? Because of the remember that fake number that came from okay. that website, they were able to get in touch with that website and get the real number. Okay. Right? But how did they, they apprehend that. them? They apprehended the guy when he was running from, you remember the guy at the bus stop saw him? Yeah. Oh, he's been locked up. Okay. He's okay. been locked up. They get his okay. cell phone. They see the exchanges going back and forth with him and Crystal. Then they know that it's that he has, his wife is in on it. Okay. So getting her was pretty easy. It was like, okay, sorry. I'm on restricted just, calories. My brain okay. is not firing on all circuits this, today. Arresting Thank her you for was, the review. Yeah. Arresting her was no big deal. Um, and she pled guilty in exchange for a reduced sentence and she would have to testify against her husband. So Crystal got 30 year sentence with the possibility of parole. Um, and I will get back to her in one minute, but I do think she did the right thing by pleading guilty. Um, well, yeah, cause that's a light sentence considering I would have to agree with you. As for Aaron, I think Aaron is truly one of the worst persons on the planet. He decided to give the state and the family a real hard time. First, he fired his attorney and decided to take the case on himself. This is not advisable. Okay. If anybody gets in trouble, I would say, unless you're a really bright person, in which case we already know Aaron is not. You go ahead and take the attorney. Um, it did give Aaron access to all the files in the case, um, but he's a real dumb shit. So he still couldn't deal with it. And so the judge at one point said, hey, I urge you to take on an attorney. And he did. But this whole thing gives, you know, it's like makes the whole process that's such a, like a narcissistic on. thing to do. He's so, he is disgusting. I know someone who um, was their own attorney in their divorce trial. And you know what? what? They're broke. They're broke. They're, They're broke. paying out the booty. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, you need an attorney. Yeah. I think you need an attorney too. Yeah. yeah. So um, Aaron actually posted something on Facebook, a 22 page affidavit in which his attorney then used as his defense. Aaron took the stand actually in his own defense stating, and this is what he had in this 22 page affidavit that he met Beverly on Craigslist and the couple and Beverly had a love affair. He claimed that Beverly suffocated in oral sex with Crystal and Crystal freaked out about it and they buried her. I mean, the theory goes against all evidence. Isn't there evidence of like duct tape being on her face? Yeah. Six times wrapped around six times. Um, and, and you must have a really, I'm just imagining this oral sex suffocation I mean you'd have to be like not to be TMI but like you'd have to have a big one <laughs> yes. so a really actually, big one the guy, even if you're sitting on it I, I mean yeah right sorry the the um one of the people like the um, autopsy person or somebody the medical the medical guy he said that sure it's possible that that could happen but in his like 20 plus years of doing this he has never seen something like that and yeah. I'm pretty sure that that I don't think so ever happened yeah so um also Crystal testified that that whole story was fake and false and that is not what happened um, she 
did get on the stand and testified against her husband, Aaron, and she was very honest. And she was even honest about her, what she did, you know, she, she did say, yes, I did. I did say that. And, um, I did tell him to do that. And I mean, I, I don't know, like, I can't, I can't even imagine. I don't know. I don't have that in me. I think she's evil. I think she's a really evil person. The defense also brought uh, Beverly's husband onto the stand and questioned their marriage. And he was honest and humble. And I hate that they did it because I feel like everybody has problems in their marriage and shit happens. And these two fought through it at 35 years and they still loved each other a lot. Yeah. So I don't think he deserved to have the world know about his problems that he had in prior years. Yeah. That is a unfortunate consequence too. Like he's already victimized enough. Like really? Yeah. But the jury also thought that he, you know, her family was truly victimized because they only deliberated for less than like an hour, about 45 minutes before they came back with a guilty verdict. And Aaron Lewis was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Oh, I like that. They did ask the family if they wanted to go and pursue the death penalty, but um, Beverly's son said that the prosecution kind of went through like what that really looks like for a family and you know it's it's a lot yeah and so they just decided no um yeah i looked aaron up he is still rotting away in prison he also has decided to be a total dickhead in prison his rap sheet is long he gets in trouble all the time, like all the time, um, like on this, on this Arkansas thing, it says like what their, their violations are. are. Yeah. yeah. Like stealing trafficking. I was like, what does trafficking mean? I don't really know what that means. What's he it trafficking? Means he's like moving drugs or something. Oh, oh, bringing in the contraband. Yep. Right. Threatening violence on people threatening violence on the staff and the list goes on for this douchebag as for crystal let me get back to her as of last march 2020 crystal wrote to the governor asking for clemency she hand wrote a four-page letter saying how she regrets who she was when she got into prison and she is not the same person now She has found God and could do more good for the world outside of jail than in her jail cell. She says she is stronger in character and morality. Um, But the governor, like myself, must think that the 30-year sentence is probably good for her. Um, I do appreciate her becoming a better person. And I hope once she is released, she does do good for the world. But... Dude, if she took my mother for whatever she Yeah, I want to see her. You do the crime, you do the time, boo. Yeah. Also, I'm not so sure I believe a letter. I mean, I don't, I just don't think a leopard changes its spots that easily. I mean, for a woman to be like so calculated about, you know, it's not like it happened in the moment. They plan this shit out. They didn't, they didn't plan. Bad person. Yeah, but they planned on kidnapping her. Yeah. They planned on taking her money. I mean. I know. That's a bad person. They're bad people. That's a people. bad person. Yes, yeah. They are bad people. And then she's the one that had the like thought that we got to get rid of her. So yes, she's. Yeah. She's a bad person. Yeah. So Beverly's son, Carl's Jr. has done a lot of good. He has spoken about out about his mother's murder. He. And you know what he also did, dude, he thanked Crystal as he left the courtroom because he knew that she's a big part of why Aaron got convicted. Right. Because let me tell you something else. So they found Beverly's hair and DNA on the, like they found her hair in his trunk of his car and they found DNA on the um, duct tape. 
but they weren't allowed to use it in the trial because of somehow what the police like collecting it was contaminated or something how yes yeah so they really did need crystal to tell the story and so although carl says she's an evil person he did thank her for at least stepping up and doing that also he has started a foundation called the Beverly Carter Foundation, where he travels around the country educating agents how to protect themselves in their field. So he could probably tell you all about how to be more selective on your people you let in the house. Um, You know, what also is a good thing is like, now there's so many cameras, right? Like everybody has a ring doorbell. I feel like. That's right. So anyways, check out his foundation and consider donating in Beverly's honor. If you would like, it's beverlycarterfoundation.org. Sweet. And that's a lot on, on Beverly, <sighs> on Bev. Unfortunate. Um, yeah. Sad. Uh, we have any shout outs or anything? Yeah, we do. Uh, my butt has fallen asleep sitting on this floor every time I can't wait to get your little studio digs oh my god I am like you guys I don't even think you understand here that's my drink that I'm drinking there's some shoes cute right um there's my clothes and my ass is sitting on my floor I can't show you because my computer will fall um if you want to check it out, it's on YouTube, YouTube, HWTC on the tube. Okay, you guys. Also, you guys, my cat, update on my cat. We're giving her the steroids and she is eating treats like a mad woman. I have almost gone oh, through like really? a gallon of treats. Like, yeah, she wasn't eating anything before, remember? Yeah. So all she does now is whine for treats. I give her like... I'm like, I'm feeding her so many treats that I want her to die like a happy f- treated cat. That cat. Thank yeah. you. Please remember that when I'm on knocking on death's door. <laughs> Do you want me to? I want crumb relay and over? caviar until I explode. <laughs> 100% I will do that for you. Thank I hope you. it's not for a very, very, very long time, but I will okay. definitely do that. Okay. Lydia Christian, thank you so much for your shout out. She um, posted on, on her um, thing. Also Claire Walker. Thank you so much. Nan Govin. Thank you so much. And I think that's all for this week. If you guys love us, give us a shout out on Instagram or Facebook. Also, if you want to hear more of us, we are on patreon.com forward slash housewives of true crime and follow us on Facebook, follow our group housewives of true crime group, type in that whole thing, yeah. even with the group name. Oh, housewives listen, I have a group. shout out. Oh, please because, give it to oh, me. Okay. I'm going to give it to you hard. Because um, you said you got something, somebody made your day. Someone made my day. A what? listener, a new listener sent me a message this morning and was like, I just had to write you. And I was like, thank you for not telling me I'm an asshole. That is greatly appreciated. <laughs> what did they tell you instead of being I, an asshole? I just, I just think you guys are great. So oh. like, anyways, her name is Carrie L. Okay. So thanks for a little bit of sunshine. Yeah, that is so nice. Welcome. Hey, I think I'll tell you something else on Patreon. Actually, I was going to tell you now, but I think that uh, you guys, it's it's juicy. Well, you know, there's some things that we just save for Patreon that we don't want. I don't know. It's like a little bit. It's a little extra. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to save that for Thursday's Patreon. Okay. (laughs) I better be good, right? <laughs> I'm giving yeah. everybody a little <laughs> there. Um, anyways, I hope you guys have a fabulous week. It's Labor Day. Oh my today god. Yeah. When this comes out. Yeah. So you guys all are probably in labor. Not in labor. <laughs> but you know what this does mean for me? 
I can start decorating for Halloween tomorrow. Dude, me too. Right? Did you see the little skeletons I got? I posted it on the page. No, I didn't see. I've been so busy today. I could not do anything else. Um, I, by the way, I went to my kids' school, like back to school where they tell you all the stuff that they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. My kid's not doing any of it. Oh, really? I came home because last year I didn't get that right. I, we started mid year here and because of COVID, I think they didn't even, they probably didn't even have that. I don't know, but I, we had some tears last night because I was like, uh, we are playing a lot of Fortnite, and we are not doing all this stuff that they are telling us that you should be doing every day. Oh yeah. 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 That's so. rough. Dude, I just got an email that my kids back to school night is going to be virtual. Ugh. Yeah. See, I, I don't think you get the full experience when it's virtual. Well, I want to meet the teacher. I want, I know. you know, I want them to like see me, you know, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but riddle me this. My kids school through a luau that was packed. Okay. Millions of kids running around and families, but we can't have back to school night. It's just the parents. Like we can't fashion some way to just have the teacher meet us all outside. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you something. I think that the teachers are more scared of the parents than they are of the kids because same, there was a bunch of teachers that decided not to come to back to school night here. And they were like, we're just going to send you our syllabus uh, virtually. And one of my te- one of my kids' teachers quit on Monday. Oh my gosh. And, um, let me tell you something else. I just, I could tell that they were very uneasy with the parents. Funny thing is, is I went and did back. I went to, um, what do you call it? Like I did the spirit shop. I sold some stuff. At yeah. Sp- and I was more scared of the kids than the parents. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I, have yeah. opposite, I have the opposite effect. I just wish, I mean, I think there's solutions. Like, how about you just ask only one parent come? So that already reduces the number of people. And then maybe have two back to school nights. So it's like broken up into a small group. So it's only like 10 people at a time. Hold it outside. I just think there's like solutions because the virtual thing is bullshit. Listen, I'm sorry that you're still in California because I sometimes I feel like they have really gone off the deep end in common sense. Okay. Yeah. The common sense has floated out the window in so many ways these days. So what are you gonna do? My other son, I didn't even get a the one that goes to the private school. I don't even I don't even think we have a back to school night. night. No. Like and we also had a carnival. So go figure. I don't yeah. know. Anyways, clink, clink, everybody. Okay. Clink, clink. <laughs>